Hello everybody. Welcome to the inaugural gameplay of Out of Ammo, Out of Time. I'm Krabby Terror 8, here to play The Gathering in the Night of the Zealot campaign with our first investigator who is Roland, Roland Banks, everybody's favourite FBI investigator. So I have high hopes for Roland. We're here in the study. We've got three actions waiting lined up, two clues. Uh, high hopes for Roland because not only is he good at fighting, but if he uh, defeats an enemy, his special ability obviously is that he discovers a clue. So he's got that uh, lovely double effect. So I'm hoping that that will come to play here. We're obviously um, trapped here in our study. I'll just quickly go through the agenda. So what's going on? It's late at night. You're holed up in your study researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. I'm assuming it means the disappearances are bloody and not oh, those bloody disappearances. But anyway, I'm assuming that's what it means. A few hours into your research, you hear a sound of strange chanting coming from your parlour down the hall, as opposed to uh, normal everyday chanting that you might hear in your parlour down the hall. This is strange chanting. Um, at the same time, you hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor. Now, given that uh, Roland's sanity is only five, this is going to give him pause, I'm sure. Um, so we're trapped. Uh, as you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only a solid wall. Not normally this kind of thing one expects when one does a renovation. So I'm assuming that Roland wasn't expecting that. So you're trapped inside your study and you need to find, or you until you can find another way out, we need two clues. Handily, there are two clues in the study. We've just got to find them. So that's where we're at. This is the first investigator to go. I, I'm hoping that Roland's sanity won't get the better of him and he'll end up cowering in a corner. I'm hoping that uh, he will do well in this scenario as he's the first one to go. So let's start, it's the investigation phase, but we haven't actually drawn our cards yet. So let's start by drawing our five cards. See how we go, one, nice vicious blow. Two are uh, excellent, Dr. Milan Christopher, every investigator's favourite seeker. Uh, number three, uh, yes, fantastic, we've got a 45 automatic. Number four is working on a hunch, which allows us to um, discover a clue at our location, or we can use it towards that, that's very nice. And also evidence, so after you defeat an enemy, discover a clue. So we, we've got lots of clue drawing, but we've also got Vicious Blow and we've also got 45. So from that perspective, really positive. The only problem is, is it's going to be a bit difficult to pay for all of this. So an emergency cash would be nice. I feel like we're a bit overdone on the, on the searching side. So my feeling is this, I don't think we need working on a hunch and evidence. So my feeling is I might, um, yeah, this is any time, this is more restricted. So I'm going to take this one out. I'm going to keep the rest and I'm going to draw another card, which is our weakness, which I didn't know what the weaknesses were actually. I, I just chose a random weakness. So we now know what our weakness is. It's haunted, which is appropriate for Roland. He's haunted. So we'll put that one out and see what else we get and we get hyper awareness which would be a good card uh, rem remembering this is a starter deck this would be a good card if we had lots of um, assets um, at the moment we've got no emergency cash so the problem with hyper awareness is, is just being able to power it so anyway we'll put, put these two uh, back into the deck shuffle the deck so this is what we're going to start with We've got three turns, and the focus here has got to be getting out of the study in the first instance. The second thing is getting our 45 automatic out onto the play. But let's start with Dr. Milan Christopher first, because I think not only does it allow us to 
search better, but secondly, it's a way of getting extra resources, which we can then use to bring out the 45 automatic and indeed things like hyper awareness. So a very nice card all around. So for our first action, we will spend four and we will bring out the good doctor. I realized when I looked at it the other day, he's got blood all over his um, tunic there, which is rather gruesome, but anyway. So we get plus one, and um, after we successfully investigate, we gain a resource. So that's our first action. And indeed, for our second action, we will investigate Shroud of Two. We are now an intellect of four. So two versus four. I'm not going to use this at the moment. I want to keep this for, I know the seller is a four shroud, so let's keep it for the, when things get tough. So let's just go straight up. We are going, um, we're going a four versus two, so a minus two or better. Chaos Bag says, yes, indeed, we get a clue. Woohoo! Uh, which also means we get a resource. Um, and then for our final one, there's no limit to this every time we successfully investigate, so we'll do it again. Two versus four. Chaos Bag says two versus four. No, we don't. So clearly this final resource is going to be tougher than we thought. It's clearly something hidden away in a deep dark corner of the study that we weren't aware of. Um, so that's all right. So that's our that's our three so we got malign christopher out and we investigated successfully got a resource and then we investigated again and didn't so we're going to stay in the study the other thing i should say just here is i've put out the other cards purely because it just saves me messing around with that later because we know the study is going to disappear relatively quickly and then it will be time um to, to move to the the other parts so it it made sense just to set it all out ready to roll um, obviously we're, we're, we can't we're in the study at the moment so that's our investigation phase done uh, pretty good start I think rollers off off to a good start let's um, move to the enemy phase or the enema phase as I like to call it um, no enemies at the moment, so we can move directly on to the upkeep phase. We get a Guts, which is very handy. There's a couple of cards here which are really not good. Um, one, actually, which I'm hoping I won't draw, is um, the, the infamous Crypt Chill, which would send Malign Christopher on his way. The other for Roland is, is any kind of test that... Um, rotting remains in particular if you do a bad draw on rotting remains you can end up um, going insane very quickly so guts is a huge help in that regard so I'm very glad that we drew that I was a bit concerned about that so that's that's our upkeep let's move on to everybody's favorite phase the mythos phase so a doom on uh, the agenda. So first to do, let's go ahead and draw an encounter card. Please no Crypt Chill. Encounter card, here we go. And it is indeed not, but it's Grasping Hands. So this isn't too bad. This is the physical version of Rotting Remains. We've got a reasonable amount of physical health, so this shouldn't be too bad. So this here is test three. For each point you fail, take damage. I'm only at two, so that's quite low. Now there is no way in hell that I'm using my 45 automatic in this skill test. However, I am inclined to use hyper awareness because even though we have nine health, I still don't want to lose, you know, four health right at the get-go so uh, I'm going to mitigate that to a degree with hyper awareness which gives us at least a three versus a three and let's see what the chaos bag has to say about that chaos bag says 
minus 2. So we do take 2 damage from that. Um, so we do take 2 damage. Ouch. Grasping hands really do they do grasp. So there we go. That's the, that's the first. That's the first one. Okay. So there we go. That's that's the mythos phase. Took some damage. That's okay. We've still got plenty of health. I could have put some on the line. Well, no, actually, I couldn't have put the on Christopher. He would have gone. So I won't be doing that. But I could have put the odd horror on him if I need to. Um, that's the end of that phase. We are now moving on to the investigation phase. So this is turn two. We have our three actions here. I should have put that on in the upkeep phase. So the main my main objective here in this phase is to get the final clue, get into the hallway and start moving through that. The other thing I should be thinking about is also getting a weapon out because it's likely that we're going to start seeing some enemies. So that's something else to consider. And also getting more assets out on the table in case the dreaded crypt chill comes along. So I think the first thing to do here is we, we can't bring out the automatic at the moment because we've only got three um, resources. So I think the first thing to do is to investigate the study for the final time. So we are an intellect of four. It's got a shroud of two. I'm not going to pitch anything in for this. We're just going to go with that. So it's a, it's a minus two or better. And the chaos bag says a skull, which is perfectly fine. That's number of ghoul enemies. There are none. So our first action is we get the clue which means we get another resource, very nice, which means we are now in the study because the study then disappears, as we know from trapped. Um, we can see we discard the study, we, we're in the hallway and those sorts of things, so that can now be removed and we're now at the barrier so we know the barrier is there blocking our path to the parlor we've got to get three clues to hang them back to the hallway essentially to advance which as we know is when shit gets real it's when we have the ghoul priest um, happens i don't know what keeps happening to this path here i don't know why it keeps changing but anyway so we've spent one action that was that we're now in the hallway so i think for my second action i really do want to get the 45 automatic out so i'm going to spend the four clues and actually let's get rid of those two clues because we've spent those as well so for my second action bring out the 45 automatic and that has four ammo on it so let's put four ammo so we've got no cash, but we've got a 45 automatic. We've still got Malign Christopher. So we're, we're doing well from an investigation and from a fighting perspective. Uh, so that's our second go. Now for our third go and final go, we have a choice. We could either hang out in the hallway and draw a card or something, but I'm inclined to keep moving. So. I can either go to the attic, which is a gourmand's delight of rotten meat, or we can go down to the cellar, which is freezing cold. I think I'm going to start in the attic, so I think I'm going to move to the attic. I know I take a horror, but Malign Christopher is going to take that in the chin for me. So let's move up to the attic. There we go. Attic has two clues on it. Um, we have to take a horror. Well, Malign's taking the horror. <laughs> <laughs> so Milan is particularly 
assaulted by the rotting meat for some reason. Um, so this has only got a shroud of one, so this, this really gives us more opportunity to get more cards in place to deal with the seller, which is a little bit more difficult from a shroud perspective. We, um, we've got plenty of ammo. Lion Christopher's fine, just a bit shaky. We've taken a couple of damage. I think we're all good. So I think we're all ready now for to move forward. I'm pretty happy with where we've gotten to in the second turn. So let's let's keep going. So the enemy phase, or the enema phase. No, there's no enemies to speak of, so that's a very short phase. The upkeep phase, we draw the old Book of Law, which is extremely, extremely handy. One of my most favourite cards in the whole game. Exhaust it, and top three cards, so really handy for drawing cards. So um, once we've got some more resources, it will be definitely be worth bringing out. So that's our upkeep phase. We now move with some trepidation to the phase that everybody loves and cherishes, which is the mythos phase. Do I need to oh, I'll put um, actions back on? Put the actions back on there. <laughs> put the pathway right again. Seemingly something I'm going to have to do. And uh, we are ready to roll. So let's move on to the Mythos phase. So the Mythos phase ticks over to two. It hasn't flipped yet, and we move to the Encounter deck. What are we going to get? And the Encounter deck is, yes, this is this is uh, one which can undo Roland very easily if you're not careful, which is Rotting Remains. It's a three test. You fail by it, you take a horror. So Roland isn't the most uh, strongest when it comes to his mental health. So at the moment we're on three and it's a test with three. So it's a no brainer. Guts is going into to make it a five versus three. Am I going to use the old book of law? I don't, I don't really want to commit the old book of law, mainly because we might get another. And I might need that, but secondly, it's such a great card. So I'm going to go with uh, five versus three. So a minus two or better, which I think are pretty good odds. So here we go. Chaos token says minus one. Rotting remains, no issue at all. And we get to draw a card. Brilliant. So we get the knife. The knife comes out. Brilliant. Okay, well, that's good because the reason that's good is even though the knife is pretty wimpy, the great thing is if we get that out and then we get Crip Chill, we've got something fairly fairly low key to throw out. So I'm pleased to see that because I really didn't want to have to choose between Milan Christopher and the 45. It's nice to have something a bit crappy to throw out if we get Crip Chill. Having said that, probably Crip Chill won't come up. So, <laughs> but you never know. Okay, so that's the mythos phase. Let's just get rid of that. Let's move on to the next phase, which is our investigation phase. Okay, here we go. So, the obvious thing here is we want the victory, no doubt, um, and we want these. So we need we need three clues. So we've got to go to both locations anyway, but we want to get this done fairly quickly. So what I'm going to aim to do is I'm expecting here that we can get the two clues, one and two, and then I'm going to bring out the knife. I know that it's not quite as quick as moving back to the hallway, but I'm just aware of Crip chill and also the knife's there so if we do get some kind of monster spawning I don't have to be using up my ammo because you know I also want something to plug the ghoul priest with when that time comes that's what the vicious blow is there for um, so let's see how we go so here we are shroud of one 
we've got an intellect of four with Mr. Christopher. So let's go ahead and for the first first action, we will see what the chaos bag says, and it's zero. It's an easy easy clue, and we also get a resource. Thank you. Second go, same thing again. So we are a four versus a one. So chaos bag says minus one. So again, we succeed again, not surprisingly. And we get another resource. So we're up to three resources. That's really, really nice. So that was our second action. And then for our third action, our crip chill avoidance action, we're going to spend a resource and bring out the knife. Now I must also note here, I've now got my hands are full. So I can't use the old book of law. Um, so yes, that's just something to think about. But the knife is fairly expendable. So at some stage, I'm sure we can bring out the book of law or we can use it for one of those willpower tests that seem to unnervingly pop up at the most inappropriate times. Um, so we've got that uh, ready to roll. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's that's our turn done. Um, went as expected, so that's good. It's always good when things go expected, and we we've um, we've got a victory on here. Um, so that's great. So actually, I might just put a little um, a little one of these on here just to show that we've got that victory. I don't want to put it in the victory pile because things might spawn there. And, <laughs> spoilers things might spawn there so I just don't want to um, forget that we got the victory there so things go very nicely with Roland I'm sure things will get hairier as we go on the um, enemy phase the enema phase uh, it, no we don't need our brown pants at the moment everything's fairly quiet it's been very quiet just sort of a few grasping hands things like that so we'll move on to the upkeep phase we get the magnifying glass and this is great because when we get to a shroud of four we're probably going to need some of these I can't use the magnifying glass in my hand at the moment um, but you know it's good to be able to pitch it in for a um, for a test if we need to so that's all good we've got lots of resources to spend on those things things are looking pretty good but of course as we know that could change very very quickly ah okay let me just remember to put our three actions back here remember to do what it always says in the um, rules to do is to make sure that your pathways are facing the right way i'm not sure he keeps doing this if anybody is watching and they have some kind of answer as to why the pathway keeps rotating away uh, that would be really good to know because the others don't do it it seems to be only that one and i'm not sure why uh, maybe it's just a little bug in the program so here we are we've um upkeep phase uh, is is done let's move on to the mythos phase now this this is actually a crucial moment because this is when uh, this is when this flips uh, lead investigator must decide either investigator draws a discards a card at random or the investigator takes two horror there is no way in a bazillion years that that, that Roland's taking the two horror he's just not got the um, mental strength for that so let's um, random discard and we lose the old book of law I'm actually more unhappy about that from a willpower perspective to be honest because if we do get another rotting remains it's it could it could be nasty but anyway, um, that's, that's that's the way it goes. So yes, we've lost rotting remains. So be it. Uh, we've now got seven turns uh, as the ghouls slowly start to take over the place. Um, so the floor beneath you is giving way, and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Hmm. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swift, swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. 
Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah, good advice. Okay, so anyway, let's let's uh, let's focus on getting the other clues. So, um, but first of all, it's time for some encounters or an encounter. Encounter time. Here we go. Ah. Well, well, well. Here we are. Rotting remains. Is this game? This game somehow. Anyway, that was uh, it's a horrible synergy there. Well, I don't know what the opposite of synergy is. Dissynergy, unsynergy. But that was a very horrible. Lost the book of law and got the rotting remains. So this is a test three, and we are three. For each point you fail by, take a horror. So Milan Christopher could be out the door depending on what we get. Um, because I have had circumstances where literally, um, because I should already have a horror on me. Yes. Oh no, I put it on Malone Christopher tonight. I've had instances where I haven't had someone like Malone Christopher. I've taken a horror going to the attic and then I've literally failed by four and that's it. It's all over Red Rover. Roland goes screaming away. So let's see how we go. Chaos Bag says, Minus two, so that's not too bad. That's um, so uh, three versus five, so we take two horror. Um, I'm going to put those on. I don't want to lose Milan Christopher, but I'm going to put those on. Um, I'm going to put those on Roland. That was really unfortunate, but it could have been worse. Going to have to be very, very careful with my horror. Um, any more horror, Milan's going to have to take it on the chin. I'm hoping there's no more of those. I'm hoping that's the uh, that's both of those gone. But that's that wasn't really the one I really didn't want to have to get, and I lost the old book of law as well. So that was really unfortunate. That's the way it goes. Roland is a bit shaky, but we move on. Okay. Investigation phase. So the first thing we do is we move to the hallway, and um, then the second thing we do is we move to the cellar. Cellar, floor shroud. After you enter the cellar, take a damage. Yep. So we're up to three damage, two horror. Um, that's not too bad. We've got, we can take plenty of damage. It's the horror. That's the, the horror. The horror. That's the problem. So here we are. Uh, two clues here. Two clues. Okay. So uh, we've got one turn left. So we've got a choice here. We could draw a card and hopefully... Oh, we could do the search. Yeah. I feel like we've got lots of time, so I don't feel like we're low on time. So I'm actually more inclined to draw a card because I don't want another. So let's draw a card for our third one. We get the flashlight. Okay. I mean, it's not a willpower, but... Um, and we can't put it into our hand, but it's something we can, like these other ones, we can pitch. Um, so there we go. That's our three turns. Okay, so we achieved, we got got ourselves to the cellar. The only thing I'm, I'm down to three, so uh, three, well, uh, horror. So that's the only thing that's um, a little bit unfortunate going to have to be very very careful about so hopefully when it comes time to do something with the ghoul priest we can we'll be set up in such a way that we can take him out relatively quickly because the problem with the ghoul priest is we can't really survive more than a hit and a retaliate or something like that it's it's going to be very dicey so yes so that's uh that's our phase. Let's move on to the next phase, which is the enema phase. No enemas, so 
nothing to do there, nothing to see here. But move on. No enemies. Next phase is the upkeep phase, and we get a guts. Well, that's good. So we are, our willpower is now bolstered somewhat, which is good. Which makes me wonder whether I should have maybe drawn a card rather than investigating to earlier. I was sort of banking on not getting rotting remains and also losing the old book of law. But anyway, think about that in hindsight. That's where we are. So that's not too bad though, and we've got four. Um, we've got four resources, so we've got plenty of resources. We haven't got the crypt chill, so I was counting on the sort of crypt chill a bit, but that's okay. We've got plenty of opportunities to get these other clues, um, and then we can plug this ghoul priest um, fairly easily. Um, uh -huh. So. That was the upkeep phase, that was turn four. We are now moving into turn five, which is the mythos phase, one doom. Here we go, it's time for everybody's favorite um, part of the game that people love and indeed cherish more than anything in the world, and that is getting an encounter. And here we go, and it is the crypt chill. <laughs> Everybody's favourite encounter in the, <laughs> in the gathering. Ah, uh, yes. Here we go. Test four. If you fail, choose and discard an asset you control. So it's a test four. We are at three. <clears throat> the question is, do we put the guts against it? Or do we, do we not? And do we keep the guts for something else? Um, look. Let's let's do it. So put up the guts. So we're a five versus a four. And the chaos bag says zero. We did it. We avoided the crypt chill. The you know, guts and we get to draw a card and we get the manual dexterity. Which will be handy for the um, grasping hands if we get that. Because uh, let's face it, we're not the most nimble investigator in the world. Uh, Roland is fairly klutzy on his feet, so manual dexterity is a nice thing to get. So there we go. That, that was not too bad for the mythos phase. We can then move on to turn five. Uh, investigator phase. I forgot the actions on here, which I'll do now. Three, three actions. Okay, so we've got three actions here. I think I'm keen to, um, to get these clues. Um, so we've got a choice here. We can first play and discover a clue straight up. Now we're a four and it's a four. So what I'm thinking is that we uh, first of all pitch the magnifying glass and the flashlight because after this we just won't, won't need them. So that's plus two. Um, so that gives us a three, four, five, six, six versus four, which is pretty good. Let's see how we go. Six versus four. Chaos Bag says, Elder Sign. Wow. Which means plus one for each clue on your location. So we, we completely monster that. So we completely monster that. We get a clue and we get a resource. Fantastic. Might as well do this. Fast play during your turn. So that's one, two for that. So fast play during to discover another clue at your location. I don't... We didn't investigate to do that, so we don't get a resource for that. But that just saved us some time. So that was... Sorry, I should have taken that off. So that was our first action. So that's great. So we're... Um, we're moving ahead very, very fast, and that is indeed another. Um, that's indeed another victory. So we're now up to two victories. Um, so here we go. So we've still got two actions. So that was one action and a fast play. We've still got two actions left. 
it on. Yes. I'm almost sure I took the damage. Did I take the damage? I did actually. I don't think I did. I just realized I don't think I added. Um, I do apologize. I should have added another damage. I don't think I did when I moved there. Hmm. I can't see it here because I can see I was in the attic. Um, where are we? Minus two, so I took two there. I took two there. Oh no, that was for the horror. Oh no, I did. I did. Sorry, I did. Sorry, I did. Yep. Wow, these. this is fantastic, because when I play with the cards, you don't have a log to look at. So this is brilliant. Like, you can actually look and check. So that was really good. So where were we? So we've done one action. We've got two actions left. I'm not keen to trigger the um, trigger yet. I'm actually thinking I'm going to draw two cards. I'm going to draw two cards. Let's see what we get. One, two. <gasps> ah. Right, that's easy. We can deal with that next go. So what I'm going to do next go is I'm going to do that and move back. So let's put that into our threat. I think you put that into your threat area. Yeah, so there you go. Anyway, that's out of the way. So that's always the danger with these sorts of things is that you end up drawing your weaknesses, but whatever. Um, that wasn't a great draw. I don't really need more cash right now. What I really need is the machete would be good, I suppose. Um, something like that. Um, or just more fight, just to bolster my fight. So anyway, that's the end of that go. Um, let's move on to the next go, which is the enema phase. There are no enemas. So we go to the upkeep phase, first aid. Nice. Nice. That's just what we need. We'll be getting that out. That will be what we'll be doing next go, is putting the first aid out. I have to say, this is probably the most horrible, most disgusting picture in the whole of Arkham Horror. The card game, it always gives me the heebie-jeebies when I see this picture. But uh, I'm really glad that we got this card. So there you go. Um, because that's going to help a ton. All right. So let's move on to the Mythos phase. So we're now in turn six. Doom goes up, but we're still miles away from seven. Let's see what we get as an encounter card. And we get, ah, we get a ghoul. Yes, we get a ghoul. Um, here we are, a ghoul minion. Not a ghoul mignon, a ghoul minion. Ghoul mignon is quite tasty actually, I hear, but ghoul minion, this is a ghoul minion. So not only um, are we haunted, so we got minus, and minus one for everything, but the ghoul minion is here as well. So this might be a time to use the old knife, the old kniffy, and um, yeah, do that. Um, okay, so uh, that's the mythos phase. We're now into the investigation phase, and I forgot to put the uh, actions back on here. We've got our three actions. Um, so, we can't use this at the moment, bugger, because we've got the ghoul minion. Well, we could, but that would be not a good idea. So, we're just minus one for everything. The ghoul minion has a fight of two. There's no way we're going to try and avoid this guy. We're going we're gonna to take him down. So, I'm thinking... Um, I'm thinking, well, actually, I was thinking maybe discarding the knife, but 
Actually, we've got no other hand pieces, so maybe I don't need to discard it. Let me just think this through. So if we just, just go plus one, so if we look at and try and do the stabby stabby for this, um, well, the problem with that is, is we only do one damage, so actually discarding it might be a good idea. So if we discard the knife, we get plus two, um, which would give us an attack of six, but we're minus one, which would give an attack of five. Yeah, I think that's the best thing to do. Let's go for it. So we're going to discard the knife. We're going to throw the knife at the ghoul minion. We're trying to make the ghoul minion into a ghoul minion, actually. That's that's what we're essentially trying to do here. Um, so we're, we're going to throw the knife at the ghoul minion. Uh, so as I said, you normally get plus two. So we would go for, um, yeah, a six. But we're actually, it's going to be a five. Um, a5 versus 2, so it's a minus 3 or better. Chaos Bag says 0. The knife does the job. Knife is gone. Ghoul Minion is dead. There's no clues to get, so unfortunately we, we, we don't discover any clues, but the Ghoul Minion is dead. Uh, so that was, that was one turn. I'm going to use the other two turns to get rid of are uh, haunted. Get, get that out of the way. Don't, I don't want that. Uh, so that's our turn. Fortunately, haunted made it much shorter than it might have been. So from there, we go to the enemy phase. There are no enemies. We then move to the upkeep phase. <laughs> this <is> great. <laughs> uh, yes, that's a pretty useless card to get at this stage of the game. Just add the actions back here. Um, it's all fine. So, first aid, yep, good. Pretty useless card to draw. Emergency cast, fairly useless cards at the moment. We don't need either of those. Some more fighting would be handy before we take on the Ghoul Priest. <clears throat> so, let's move directly on to the next phase, which is indeed. The mythos phase, we're now in turn seven. So the mythos phase, we're up to three. We've still got four turns to go. We've got plenty of time. So let's see how we go with uh, the encounter deck. Ah! <laughs> Funny I should say that, we've got plenty of time. Is this game listening to what I'm saying? And then it's a very spooky, isn't it? Yes, so we added Doom to here. Ah, <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay. It doesn't cause it to advance, but there you go. All right. <clears throat> Fine. Okay. Right. So it is now the investigation phase. Here we are. So we've got three turns. So we've got a few choices here. We definitely want to get the first aid out. Um, and we definitely, um, it's not an action to, no. So the question is, do I try, do I hang around and try to get more fighty fighty things? Or, because the vicious blow does an extra, yeah, but it's the only one. On we've got it would be good to have more fighty fighty things uh, I mean five damage I mean we've got you know we've actually got probably more than enough for what we need to take out the ghoul priest to be honest so what I might do is I might um, I might do I might actually do those things so um, first action spend two Bring out first aid. Nice. Okay. The second action. Oh, hold on. How many? Three supplies. Only three supplies. Okay. Second action. We're going to spend a supply and heal a horror. So we're back up to four. And six, so that's a bit better. Third action, we're going to move back to the hallway. OK, 
Okay, so we can spend our three back at the hallway. So I think we'll be fine. We shoot the ghoul priest with the 45 automatic. It would have been it'd be nice, I suppose, to have a a guard dog or a big cop. But who knows, they could be sitting at the bottom of the deck and we could be waiting forever. So it really comes down to whether we uh, do that or not. He's a four. We're a four. So yeah, it would be better to have something like that. Anyway, I'll think about it. Maybe we, maybe we go another round. It's, it might be better. Okay, <clears throat> at least if we're in the hallway, if one of those nasty ghouls spawns who spawns in the attic or the cellar, we, we don't have to deal with them as much. So that's our, that's our go. We're now ready in the cellar. So, um, yeah. So next round is the enemy phase. There are no enemies. Okay, upkeep phase. Um, yeah, we get the mind over matter, which would allow us to use our intellect of four. This is our fight, which, is, but it's got a fight pip, so that's actually good. So we've got a fight pip, so it's actually better. Okay, uh, and then it costs one. So let's go to the um, mythos phase. Mythos phase, we're up to five now. Let's see what we get from the encounter deck. Um, dissonant voices, you can't play assets or events. Okay, that's, that's no big deal really. We've got plenty of things to play. We don't need to do anything, so that's fine. Dissonant voices still lives, as I call it. Um, make a great movie, that, wouldn't that Dissonant voices still lives. Companion piece too. Distant voices still lives. So anyway, so can't play assets or events, big deal, we're not really looking at doing that, so let's just stick that there. Um, and that's that, right? That's that phase done. So let's move on to ours. Whoops, I should have put some resources here. Not resources, what am I doing? Actions. Yeah, so we've got three actions. We can't play things, but we can... Essentially, we can draw. So that's what I'm thinking we should do. I'm thinking we draw some cards. First card we get. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Everybody's favorite, the Dynamite Blast. Second action is Barrier. Okay. Hmm. Okay, and the third action is the knife. So that's another fight. Okay, so we've got a couple more fights. Yeah, and we've got the dynamite blast. So, yeah, interesting. I'm thinking we could maybe do a couple of things with those. So that's our actions. Dissonant voices can go. We're done, I think. End of the round. Is this the end? No, it's not the end of the round yet. Going a bit ahead of myself. Okay, so that's our. We're done. Um, enemy phase. No enemies. Upkeep phase. Ah. Aha. Ah, guard dog. Okay, we've got to get rid of these. This is useless. So we got rid of that one. We don't. We don't need it. So I mean, I suppose we could use it to parlay with um, Lita Chandler. Chandler. That's not really. It's not really the way we we're going to go with this deck. Um, so, and I definitely want to replace 
the Lion Christopher with the guard dog. So, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. That's that's our f up upkeep phase. We then move into the turn nine mythos phase. This is up to six, so this is going to flip. In fact, it might flip over this go, depending on what we get in the counter deck. But this is getting close. Uh, let's see how we go. Encounter deck says, uh huh. Humanoid ghoul. Okay, so we get a ghoul. This, this, sorry, should have gone. So, I've got a ghoul. I hate this ghoul the most because he's quite strong. And um, at the same time, you don't get anything for him. So, hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so it's now our turn. Actions. Got three actions. Um, mm -hmm. So, what do we do here? What do we do? We've obviously got to deal with this ravenous ghoul as quickly and as efficiently as possible while not using too much of our 45. Um, hmm. So, yeah, I think this is what we're going to do. We're going to, um, Fire at the so the first thing we're going to do is fire at the ghoul. So that's um, plus one fight. So we get five fight versus three. Five fight versus three. Five versus three. So that's a minus two or better. Chaos bag says. Yeah, that's fine. That's just a minus one. So he takes two damage. Yep, two damage. Yep, we do two damage. Then what I'm going to do is I'm assuming if I do it this way, I'm going to pay three. One, two, three, and I'm going to bring out the guard dog. If I bring out the guard dog, that means Milan Christopher goes. Now that provokes an attack of opportunity. That's my second go. So he does one health and one horror. So I'm going to put a damage on the guard dog. When the enemy attacks, when enemy attack deals damage to guard dog, deal damage to the enemy, so that kills the ghoul. And then there's just a horror to me. So I take the horror. Two horror. So um, I think I did that in the right order. So I shot the ghoul. Then I played the guard dog, which with the play the guard dog, Milan Christopher goes which means then there was an attack of opportunity. I put one damage on the guard dog, guard dog did damage to the ghoul. I took the horror, which leaves me with a third turn. And 
I think for the third turn, I am going to bring out the knife. So we now have another fight. Okay, that's my three turns, and I think um, I am going to uh, spend the three. Okay. Um, all right. Enemy phase. There are no enemies. Upkeep phase. We get the machete. <sighs> wow. Okay. Well, I think the thing is, let's see how we go with the mythos. If we get another, um, if we get another um, creature coming out, we'll use the knife, and then we can bring in the machete. Let's see how we go. Okay, so, all right, let's see. Um, now, we have a choice here. We can, um, this is the upkeep phase. So now, let's do it. Let's spend the three resources. One, two, three. We spend the three resources. So that flips that. So Lita Chandler ends up in the parlor. This is no longer locked. So take this off. Um, I think that flips. Um, basically, we can resign, we can parley with Leader Chandler, and we spawn the ghoul priest in the hallway. Hello, I'm the ghoul priest. Man, what a dude, eh? All right, so that's, that's where we're at. Okay, shit just got real. Ghoul priest in the hallway. Things are going down. I think we're I think we're pretty I think we're pretty well set here okay so I think we're all good it really depends what our friends in the encounter deck decide to throw at us because it is possible of course that we might end up with um, uh, two but let's see how we go um, okay So now we've just got to defeat the ghoul priest. Okay, here we go. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Discard pile cards from the top until a ghoul enemy is discarded. The lead investigator draws that enemy. All right, let's see how we go. Um, okay, so these go into here. Yep, and then we start drawing them. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, not again. Jeez. Oh man, that was that was unfortunate. Okay. Oh, well, well, here we go. Well, we know who we need to go after. So, you know. Yeah. Okay. Let's just put three on him. Yep. Um, of course, the other thing is we could try and... No, we're not going to try and... We could try and move and dynamite. Well, we could even just dynamite, couldn't we? Because just everybody takes three damage. So we could do that as well. But anyway, let's not... Because actually we could do three damage and no one in enemy attacks, you can't do that. But anyway, let's see how we go. Okay, so we've got two two lovely ghouls on us. We've got lots of things going down. We've still got to, yep, so that's that. So the only other thing we've got to do, we're now you hear Kray's howl outside and suddenly all the creatures turn their attention to that sound. They rush to escape the house, breaking down doors and flooring. At the end of the enemy phase, each unengaged ghoul enemy moves one location towards the parlor. Forced at the end of the round, place one doom on this agenda for each ghoul enemy in the hallway. So, yeah, it's getting to that point. It's getting, yeah, shit just got real, basically. Let's do an encounter. Ah! Rotting remains for each point you fail. Test three for each point you fail. Take a horror. Ooh. Okay, well, we can't fail this. So, unfortunately, these are going to go... Dynamite Blast and Barricade. 
nasty, very nasty card for Roland. Um, because the guard dog can't take horror. We've got two horror on us, so yeah. So now we've got a five versus a three. Chaos Bag says minus two, but we do take a damage. So we succeed, but we take a damage. Mm. It's all happening here. We're up to five. Okay. Actually, we could have. No, we want it. We don't want to because the guard dog. We want to maximise the damage it it gives. It does to others. Okay. Here we go. We really need to get get this ghoul priest dispatched. This is no time for flimmy flaming around now. It's time to get it done. So we've got three turns. We need to do five points of damage to the ghoul priest. So the obvious thing to do is to shoot at the ghoul priest. So that's a plus one. So that gives us a five. He's a four. We're going to make it a six. Seven. So we're going to make it a seven versus four. And if we do this, we'll, we'll, we'll do plus one damage. Seven versus four. So this is our first action. Four, five, six, seven. Seven versus four. Chaos Bag says minus one. Fantastic. So that's great. So what plus one plus two? We do three points of damage to the ghoul priest. Ouch! Ouch! Ghoul priest is looking shaky. He's just okay. So he's just, he's taken three. Uh, let's see now. What do we do again? Well, I think we just go ahead and we um, shoot him again. For a second turn, we shoot him again. So we're now again fight of five. We're fight of five. So I'm going to make it a six. Yes, it's a six versus a four. Not quite as strong as last time. Oh, actually, am I better off with this plus two? Actually, better off with that. Sorry, take that back. I'm going to do. I'm going to throw the knife out. Discard the knife, so I get plus two. So that's a fight of six, seven. So it's seven again, and he's going to be dead. If we do this, he's dead. <sighs> Chaos bag says minus one for each ghoul. So it's minus two. So he's a six. But we, thank goodness we did that. My goodness. So that gave us four, five, six, seven. We succeed. Ghoul Priest takes two more damage. Ghoul Priest goes down. Woohoo! No, that's not okay. That's the wrong thing. Ghoul Priest takes. He's dead. That's it. Um, yeah. Great. Fantastic. So there we are. That is the end of the gathering, Night of the Zealot. Um, as I expected, Roland did pretty well. He managed in 10 turns to achieve um, victory points around the cellar, the attic, uh, defeated the ghoul priest, and uh, he didn't get leader Chandler, but um, I think some other investigators will probably go down that path. Didn't need to. Parleying wasn't really something I was looking to do. So we successfully defeated the ghoul priest. We just shot him a couple of shots with the help of the knife and um, vicious blow. So. 
Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I won't decide right now what, what we need to do in terms of whether he would burn his house down or not. I would be interested if anybody's out there watching this, what they think would, would Roland burn down the house or not. Um, and thank you once again for anybody who has watched this. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I hope you'll join me for the next one we'll do of the gathering. Uh, Daisy Walker will be the investigator uh, to go next. It'd be tough for her to um, to do better than, than Roland here, who's managed to, to do reasonably well. I'm going to um, I'm going to just collect all the stats because it not only will be, will be the victory points, but how many ghouls were defeated so that we can have a league table because there may be a number of investigators who actually get equal victory points. So I want to make sure I've got some other stats there in, in terms of how many they defeated, how many clues they ended up with, how many resources they had left, all those sorts of things so that we can put them onto a league table. But um, as an opening salvo, I think Roland has really set the bar pretty high for the other investigators. If I was the other investigators, I would be a little bit concerned that, about um, trying to um, achieve his, his level of success with um, the gathering. And um, as I said, thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And good night and goodbye.